latest technology training, emerging technology training, content development, and more. Then the today's webinar is organized by ETC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ETC community is open to all the people who are interested in emerging technology. You just need to follow our meetup group, which is an emerging technology community for all. You just need to install the meetup app on your phone and follow our community so you will get the update about our event, webinars and workshop. Then we have a small code of conduct which you all need to follow. Please note no one is allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording. We'll share this recording of the webinar on our YouTube channel, the official YouTube channel. The link for it will be provided to you all in the chat box so you can subscribe our YouTube channel. Then the agenda for the session, as you can see on the screen. Go ahead. Now the today's speaker for the webinar is Mr. Makran Bhoi. He is an practice head and working as a training consultant in Synergetics. Then we have upcoming ETT webinar on front end development with AWS Amplify. So this is on 21st of December. From 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. two hours webinar it will be. So registration link will be provided to you in the chat box. If you want to register for that webinar, you can register through that. Then do follow us on our social media platforms to get the daily updates regarding the webinars workshop we do. Now I would like to hand over the mic to Makran sir so he can take ahead the webinar. Thanks to all. Thanks for your patience. Thank you, Chetan. Thank you so much. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this uh, session on Azure Spring app. My name is Makran Makran Bhoi. I'm a technology trainer in Synergetics. I have you know, around 15 plus years of teaching plus development experience. And I have conducted uh, trainings on uh, various Java technologies and open source technologies. I'm an Oracle certified professional and uh, I'm also MCT, Microsoft certified trainer. As well as uh, you know, I'm uh, Azure DevOps engineer. So let us start with uh, this session. So I'm going to speak about Azure Spring app. So I hope uh, my screen is visible to you. So we'll be talking about Azure Spring app and I'll, I'll be giving you, you know, uh, introduction to this uh, Azure Spring apps, uh, which is a uh, joint venture by Microsoft and VMware company. So agenda for this session uh, will be will be looking at the overview of a spring boot. OK, overview of a, a spring apps, Azure Spring app. Overview of, a, you know, how microservices communicate with each other. OK, and then we'll will be, you know, creating a small demo. 
OK, or we'll be deploying a small demo onto the Azure uh, Spring app. OK. So everybody you know, uh, must be aware of a spring. You know? OK, I'm not going to spend uh, too much of time on uh, discussing spring. So spring is a framework. OK, uh, which is help us to create a Java application. OK. And Spring Boot is one of the module, you know, which is present in the Spring framework, which will help us to create a Spring application much more faster and rapidly. OK, one of the important uh, feature of a Spring Boot is that it's auto configuration. OK. So other benefit of using the Spring Boot, it provides uh, you know very helpful a uh, starter form. OK, which will help us to you know OK, uh, download the required dependencies uh, from the Maven Central repository. OK. So. If you are connecting OK uh, in the in the on premise network, you know, and my application is deployed on the on premise network, you know, OK, so this is the traditional way of you know, deploying the application. You know, I'll, I'll just uh, uh, open a white screen in front of you. OK, so before Spring Boot you know, came into the existence, you know, earlier people used to do what uh, they used to create their application and uh, you know, they used to deploy their application on the web server like this. So let's suppose say this is my web server. OK, so it could be Tomcat. OK, or it could be WebLogic, WebSphere, can be anything. OK, so when we create our application, OK, and uh, you know, uh, when it's time to a uh, deployment, operation people will take that uh, you know deployed application that is uh, deployed artifact of the project, and they used to deploy it on the you know server. So this is my deployed app, which is present on the server. OK, so like this, you know, OK, it is. Possible to deploy what multiple application on the same server. OK. So now uh, with the introduction of a Spring Boot, you know, OK, Spring Boot and cloud microservices you know entire deployment pattern has you know change okay so rather than you know having the application deployed inside a web server okay now the reverse pattern will be used okay so now most probably within your application so let's suppose say this is my application deployment you know or artifact which is. Let's say. This is my. Jar file of the application. OK, so that jar file, you know, will contain application code. OK, which means which contains application as well as, you know, OK, the required runtime or you know, the server runtime which is needed to execute that application. OK, so. This is my. Yeah, let's suppose say this is my application. OK, and uh, let's say this is my server. OK. 
so with the help of a spring boot you know okay if i'm if i'm creating a spring mvc application or normal jsp servlet application without using a spring boot you know i will be creating a deployable file that will be usually in the form of a var and i will be taking that var file i will be deploying that var file on the server okay but with the help of a spring boot you know okay everything has changed now okay so spring boot is a first step towards application modernization okay we can we can modernize our application you know okay and it is very easy to modernize our application on to the cloud you know if i am using what spring boot okay where usually your application will be bundled into a jar file and that jar file is a self contained jar file which will be having their own server as well as the application code you know so i can move this jar file to the docker container or you know to the you know azure spring app as it is without making any kind of a change so this kind of a application you know is easy to migrate over a cloud Got it, guys? Any any query you are having so far? Any question, guys? Any query? No. Okay. Good. Yeah. thank you thank you for confirming okay so now i can create you know okay one single monolithic application or i can break that monolithic application into a smaller pieces you know okay called as microservice okay so if i want to show you that you know okay so if i'm having a monolithic application which i want to convert into a microservice uh, you know uh, architecture you know okay so i will be configuring a certain component you know so of course uh, i'll be configuring the required application so if let's suppose say i'm having in a monolithic application i'm having a four different modules you know so i will be breaking it down you know okay logically into a four different services okay and each different service is you know altogether a single application you know and to be specific uh, if i'm talking about java perspective i will be creating a spring boot application you know okay so like this i will be creating four spring boot application you know okay if i want to register or if i want to um, break it down the one single monolithic application which is having a four different module i will be breaking it down into a four you know okay different services okay so that four you know services you know over here i have just drawn three because because of the space constraint so so these three services you know okay i need to register okay into something called as service registry you know so i need to register a service registry you know that is also called as a discovery server 
okay for example eureka you know so eureka or console you know, these are the discovery servers you know, which is available so i will be registering that microservice application okay so this is my app 1 this is my app 2 okay and this is my app 3 i will be registering that you know microservice application into service, something called as eureka server you know okay or this is also called as service discovery service discovery and registration okay so eureka server you know okay this will get registered okay and every microservice you know okay if one application if one microservice wants to communicate with the another microservice you know so it can locate the another service from this eureka server and they can you know communicate in between okay if you want to you know communicate with my front end application so for example i have created you know okay a front end application which is you know altogether a separate application okay so for example i have a node application meaning i have let's say angular application or a react application okay so the, that angular application or react application wants to communicate okay with this you know okay so that angular application or react application you know will be you know um, getting or will be hitting first you know api gateway something called as a api gateway so any external you know application or any external entity wants to communicate to this applications you know they will be communicating via api gateway so this is your api gateway so okay so via api gateway you know okay uh, it will be connecting to this application and api gateway ultimately you know with the help of a service discovery okay so this will you know communicate to the appropriate uh, the application from the microservice okay so over here you know okay you are having a api gateway you are having you know okay uh, the service discovery so if you are doing it in the on premise network you know so everything you will have to set up by yourself you know okay so if you are if you are speaking technically so all these are the the separate uh, spring boot application so if you if you want to set up api gateway you need to create a separate spring boot application with the required dependencies if you want to set up a service discovery that is eureka server okay you have to create a separate spring boot application with the required you know dependencies and all these application that is given okay so so you need to set up this if you are doing it on premise network okay but whatever be this infrastructure support you know for example you are having a api gateway service discovery you know config server you know okay and there is a uh, monitoring support so all this infrastructure support okay 
will be provided to you. Okay, if you are migrating to the Azure Spring app, that will be provided to you out of the box feature. You know, you do not have to go and you know write a code for that. Okay, so you have to only concentrate on writing the application logic. That's it. As a developer, you should you know go and concentrate on you know writing the application logic. You know, okay, and everything else will be taken care by the you know um the Azure Spring apps. Okay, for your application. Okay, so starting from you know the auto scaling, you know if you want to create a multiple instances, okay, on the basis of the certain condition, if that condition may matches, you know then automatically the you know uh, the instance count will be increased, you know, or it will be decreased. You know? So everything will be taken care by the Azure Spring app. You do not have to go and you know write a code for that. Okay. But you will have to go and configure that thing. You know? So as per this diagram, you know, so API gateway service discovery, that is Eureka server, you know, will be provided by the okay, um, will be provided by the Microsoft Azure. Okay, as a part of a Azure Spring apps. Okay. So along with this, you know, okay, so I can set up config server. Okay. So this can help you to externalize, you know, your configuration of this application. So this config server can help you to externalize okay externalize uh, you know properties okay or externalize application rather than hard coding those properties you know i can keep those properties externally and with the help of a config server, I can be, you know, able to read those properties, you know, in the application, into the application. You know? So we can set up that config server into the Microsoft, you know, um, Azure, you know, uh, Spring app. Okay, so this config server allow you to, you know, read the properties that is application dot YAML. You know, from the Git repository, from the external Git repository. You know, so your application dot YAML file can be read. You know, okay, from the external Git repository. So this you can set up. Okay, and like this, I can set up what multiple, you know, uh, uh, YAML file, multiple configuration file, you know, to the application. Okay, along with that, you know, so this can, this application can take a benefit of uh, all other services which are offered by the Microsoft Azure platform. You know, so for example, uh, uh, it can take a benefit of Microsoft. Uh, you know, Azure databases, you know, okay. So it can connect to the Microsoft Azure database. Okay. From this application. Okay, and uh, you know, so as a Microsoft Spring Azure, you know, which will give you a option to configure a, a database which is present, you know, on Azure. Okay, and you can take a benefit of other, you know, um, other services. For example, uh, one service you can take a benefit of monitoring. You know, so you can uh, able to read the application log. You will be able to read, you know, the server log. You know. 
okay with the help of that monitoring tool and you will be able to check the health of the application you know by using that monitoring tool so one i can say the application insight so with the help of application insight you will be able to you know uh, keep track of the health of the application okay so if you are using microsoft azure spring app you know so everything you know will be provided to you out of the box okay getting it guys any any kind of a query question on this Hey, hi. Uh, could you please let yeah, me hi. know on premise uh, gateway? Oh, I mean, like what on premise gateway means? What does it do? API gateway. Uh, it is uh, kind of an API gateway. So, uh, which will you know help you to connect to the service? Okay, from you no know, outside this. Okay, so if you are doing that, you know. Uh, on premise for example on premise that means if you are doing on your laptop on your company machine you know okay then you have to set up this api gateway you know okay by creating a separate spring boot application okay you need to set up that and what is the you know benefit of using this you know so that um, whatever be the you know service url it won't be exposed outside okay so only your api gateway url will be exposed outside you know so with the help of this client will be connecting to this and you know internally this can connect to the service discovery and find out which uh, you know uh, service to call okay understood understood like within the network kind of thing for particular organization yes Okay, yes, okay. for thank, particular thank organization, you. if you are doing it, you know, uh, on premise, we'll have to set up that, uh, you know, okay, yeah, as yeah. a separate uh, Spring Boot. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you, thank you, thank yeah, you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, so let's see. So there are these many you know services which are offered by the you know Azure Spring app. As I said, Azure Spring app is joint venture which is created uh, by Microsoft and uh, VMware company. Okay, it is initially launched in the year 2019, 2019. You know about uh, two years now. You know? Okay. Two to three years now, okay. But um, the initially the you no know, the this service was named as Azure Spring Cloud, okay. But recently it got renamed to Azure Spring App in in May 2022, okay. And you know for this service, you know for Azure Spring App service, uh. Earlier there, there used to, you know, uh, we were having what two uh, plans for creating Azure Spring app. You know, there was basic plan and the standard plan, you know, okay. But, um, you know, uh, recently, that is in May 2022 itself, the couple of months back, you know, uh, they have introduced uh, enterprise versions also, you know, okay. So, which has additional features, you know, okay, uh, which is provided uh, to you. By the Microsoft as well as by the VMware. You know? So additional uh, feature which is support, you know, and licensing feature which is provided by the Microsoft and the VMware. Okay. So as usual, I can create any service uh, by using a you know Azure portal. So everybody must be familiar with the you know Azure portal. So I can create uh, you know uh, the service. This service. Azure Spring App service by using a portal. 
or I can go and make use of uh, the CLI command, Azure CLI command to create the service. Okay, to create the service, to create the application, to deploy the you know uh, the code. Okay, onto the service. You know, for everything, I can go and make use of uh, either a portal or I can go and make use of a uh, you know uh, the Azure CLI commands. Okay. So I'll just show you. Okay. Very simple. So this is where. Okay. This is how your Azure portal will look like. Okay. And so if you want to create Azure Spring app, okay. So you'll be creating. You know, OK, this option will be choosing this option as your spring app. OK, you can get this option you know, Okay, from this search box also. OK, so if you get this option. OK, you'll have to just go and create you know, as your spring app. So by creating the Azure spring app, what you are doing, you know, we are creating you know, a kind of a cluster. You know? So we are creating a kind of a cluster. So this is a kind of a cluster we are creating. So I have created. A spring app cluster. So this spring app cluster, you know, might contain, you know, multiple applications. OK, it may go and have multiple application multiple spring boot application multiple microservice application you know okay so if you are using a portal you need to just go and click on this create for creating azure spring app so what we are creating we are creating a cluster okay so you have to provide only couple of things okay so We'll just have to provide in which resource. You know, and what is the name of? Name of the cluster and this is very important. OK, so. So look at this. So this is a tier, you know, OK, and as of now, you know, OK, uh, I can say. Uh, from the Microsoft Azure perspective, you know, it is one of the, you know. One of the most expensive service I have seen, you know, on the Azure. You know? So if you look at. You know, there are three. Tier, you know, which you can choose. So you can choose a basic tier, standard tier, and enterprise tier. You know, okay. So in the basic tier, you know, you will get this two CPU, four gigahertz memory. Okay, and uh, no, you can scale up up to maximum twenty five. You know, instances. Okay, but uh, if you use the standard or enterprise tier. You will be able to, you know, uh, you know, uh, scale up or scale out your application up to 500 uh, instances. Okay. So you can see this only for standard tier and the, uh, you know, enterprise tier. You know, they are providing a SLA for the basic tier. You know, there is no SLA provided by the Microsoft. Okay. So basic tier is for only you know uh, dev and test purpose you know, for individual dev and test purpose for 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 practicing purpose you can use you know uh, this basic tier okay but something for a uh, production you know okay you should at least go and use uh, you know standard or enterprise tier okay but you know of course over and above 
first of all you know okay for exploring this if you want to explore this you know you have to create you know uh, the microsoft azure you know account first because this is not a free service okay because you have to pay some amount okay for creating you know this so for example if you are creating uh, the basic tier you know so it will be at least minimum 12300 you know 6 rupees per month if you're creating a standard service you know okay it will be you know minimum 30000 rupees okay per month okay and uh, over and above you know based on your usage you know okay it will be charged okay so i would say it will be charged per second you know okay if you're using that for a second also you know it will be charged okay so i have created this service okay as a standard service i have created okay so this is i have chosen what standard here and as of now there is no application present okay inside this so once the you know service is created by using the portal you know it will look like this you know okay but it will take uh, minimum 10 minutes to create the service okay so once you are you know service is created this is azure spring app okay or in other word once your cluster is created your cluster can have what multiple application inside you know so i can go and deploy a multiple spring boot application you know okay or multiple spring application into this cluster you know and we can see there are how many application currently deployed you know so you can click on this app you know just to check how many application are currently deployed to this you know cluster See this. <laughs> okay, so currently uh, there is no app you know, is deployed into this cluster. Okay, and we will be deploying a couple of application. You know, okay, uh, starting from now. Okay, so I can just go and create you know a uh, application again by using a portal or by using azure cli you know okay so for this time i will be making use of azure cli okay but any kind of a query up to you know now till now do you want to ask anything So I have created you know couple of application. Okay, let me just go and open my command prompt in in that application. Okay. So if I want to execute uh, you know uh, those command, you know, so from this command prompt, you know, I should first of all log in. You know. So I should first of all go and log into the Azure. Okay. So by using easy login, you know, I can just go and log in. And uh, you know, since I already logged in, it will not ask me, you know, for the password. Since I already logged in. So once this step is over, it is understood that, you know, okay. This person is going to you know, write the query. So who is going to write this query? Who is going to operate this command from? OK, this user is going to operate this command from. And this is the authorized user to you know, create uh, the application onto that cluster. OK, because this user has only created that cluster. So 
same user can create the application onto that cluster also. That is also, you know, okay, possible. Okay, so if you want to create, you know, the application on, you know, Azure Spring app, you know, okay, so you think of, I'm having one application, okay, which is running locally, you know, let's say this is the application I'm having. And I'm running this application locally. Okay. My application ran successfully. Okay. And let me just go and take the controller URL. Okay, and let me just go and you know open the postman. Okay, and just give this URL. You know? So Okay, so let me uh, you know run this. So this is working, you know, fine locally. This is getting me the output uh, locally, you know. So I want you know to deploy this you know, Spring application, okay, onto the Microsoft you know um, Azure Spring app, okay, so that you know whenever my clients access this, you know, will get the same out. But only thing rather than running this application from locally you know i will be executing that application you know okay uh, making it available you know to all the public over the internet okay so for that you know very first thing i have to create what i have to create the application and where i will be creating the application you know in this you no know, Azure app cluster. This is your Azure app cluster you have created, you know, and in this cluster, you will be creating an application. And I can do that, as I said, by clicking on this. Or, you know, OK, by writing some command, you know, so I'll be writing that command. OK. So what's that command? So Azure Spring app create. So if you if you say you know this command, you know okay, uh, this will you know give you uh, what is the exact command. You know? Okay, so this is the exact command. You know? Okay, you are you you want to write. So what you should write. So if you want to create an application, so you will be specifying what is the name of your application. Okay, you will be specifying what is your cluster name. In our case, what is our you know, uh, Azure Spring app service name. OK, and what is our resource group? Name? Yeah. So I'll be just I'll be making use of. AC Spring app. Create hyphen N. OK, and I want to give the name of my application as simple. Simple microservice. You know, though this is not a microservice, also this is a you know normal uh, you know uh, Java or Spring project. What is the 
cluster name. So I'll have to take the cluster name from. So this is your cluster name. OK, then what is the resource group name? So what is resource group? So resource group is a kind of a container, you know, OK. Uh, who can hold a different resources, you know? So from the Azure perspective, this test Azure Spring, which is I have created as a cluster, which is acting as a resource. That is, you know, contained or that is stored into one, you know, resource group. So in which resource group I have? So I need to specify, you know, okay, that resource group name over here, you know, okay. So in my case, my resource group name is Spring Resources, you know. So this is my resource group name, okay, and this is having my cluster. So okay, you can see this, you know. So this this resource group contains my test Azure Spring. This is my Azure Spring Dash. OK. OK. By default, you know, it is going to uh, assign what single CPU. OK, uh, one GB memory and by default it will it will create only single instance. OK, only one instance for this particular application. OK, and by default, you know, uh, it is going to use what uh, Java 8, you know, OK, for for the you know application deployment. OK, but in my case, I want to modify that. I don't want to use a Java 8 because I'm having Java 11. OK, so I'll be using this. option over here. So Java hyphen hyphen Java runtime runtime version Java underscore 11. OK, by the way, you can go and change that configuration after creating you know that service also you know from the Microsoft uh, port. You know? OK, so let's go and just make use of this. You know? So this will this will ultimately do what? This will just go and create, you know, one application into this cluster. You know, so you will see that application, you know, present over here you know, in just a moment. Yeah, so it has already, you know, detected this application. Okay, but it is not yet created, so this will take, you know, few few minutes. OK, so it is creating the application and you know you can you can see. So while creating, you can see. There are different options. You know? OK, so for example, there are how many running instance of this application? OK, what is this status of you know, registration? You know? OK, that means uh, whether this application is registered on the Eureka server or not. OK, and that Eureka server will be configured implicitly as a part of this. Test Azure Spring, you know, I don't have to do anything to configure Eureka server, you know, so it will be configured implicitly as a part of, you know, as an out of box feature of this uh, Spring Azure app service. OK. So once the application is created, you will see, you know, OK. Uh, this kind of a JSON, you know, okay. So this will you know, give you all a lot of meaningful information about this, uh, you know, resource. You can see this app created successfully. You can go over here. You can refresh this. Okay. Okay, and you'll be able to see. So simple application, simple microservice. Which is using, uh, you know, Java.NET uh, artifacts, 
okay but uh, still you know it is not uh, you know uh, deployed any kind of a project so i haven't deployed in any project to this application you know okay so i'll be deploying it uh, after this you know so there is one instance and that instance is running provisioning you know is successful okay and it is not registered into the eureka server okay and i'll tell you uh, why it is not registered into the eureka server you know okay because i am not included that dependency okay and i'll i'll just uh, you know tell you after when i complete this discussion you know so but as of now you can remember this this is not registered into the eureka server so you can come come to this application go inside this application okay and you can see the endpoint url so using this endpoint url you will be able to test okay you will be able to you know, test this application okay but as of now there is nothing you know, present okay that's why you know i can't test okay there is no project deployed on that application you know? okay that's why i can't test you know? so what i want to do now as a part of this okay so this workspace having you know zero one app starter i'll be going inside this and you know if you just see this you know this is nothing nothing but a java application you know okay to be specific uh, you know it is a maven project only you know it is having a pom.xml file okay so that maven project i can deploy it as it is you know okay if you look at this i can deploy this application as it is okay or i can create a you know artifact you know that is deployable artifact so for this you know it is going to be a jar file so i can create a jar file i can deploy that jar file you know on on the cloud okay so i'll be creating that jar file with the help of mvn package okay so i'll be using what uh, mvn clean package you know that's a command to create or to generate a deployable artifact so it will take few seconds okay, to generate a deployable artifact okay so once you see okay so here in the target folder you will be able to see this jar file and that jar file i will just go and upload i will deploy okay on on that uh, on that application the application which we have created just now okay so what i want to do i want to deploy okay the application you know so again you can go and find out the hint you know how to write that command okay so this is the complete command you can use okay is this spring app deploy what is the name of your application so the name which we have you know specified during the creation time so which was our simple microservice so this is the name of my application okay so i can i can make use of what uh, easy spring app deploy hyphen n this is the name of my application which we have created all, already you know okay what is the name of my cluster so i'll be taking that name again from test azure spring you know so that is my 
what's your spring that's the name of my cluster then what's the name of my resource group okay i believe spring resources what's the name of my resource group okay and you can either use you know you can either deploy the source code or you can deploy that artifact or you can you know you can deploy this container image also so you are having a lot of different options to deploy you can deploy either a code you can deploy a jar file or var file okay or you can deploy a container image you can create a docker container image you know and you can deploy that docker container image uh, to that uh, your spring okay okay but i'll be using uh deploying that artifact jar file so i have to make use of artifact path so this is option artifact path okay and see my spelling is correct or wrong oh, yeah so artifact path and after that you know okay i should specify uh, the deployable so my deployable i am currently inside you know 01 spring app starter so my my deployable present inside you know the target which is present inside this folder and inside this target i am having this deployable file okay so that deployable file you know i want to deploy okay so that okay i will be able to access this you know okay so as of now if you say look at this if we just go and i'm just copied just copied the path okay and after this what i am saying you know welcome you know so you won't be able to see any uh, output you know uh, because on that path uh, there is nothing present you know currently there is no project you know deployed on this you know so currently it is showing what 404 okay but once you deploy this application okay and once the deployment is successful you will be able to see you know the required output okay so as i said you know okay we can take the source code as it is okay but that is not a good practice to take a source code you know okay because you do not want to expose your entire source code to the you know or uh, to the azure you know so best practice you know we will deploy usually the artifact that is jar or var okay but point to remember we can deploy as of now at least as of today we can deploy only jar you know uh, as per the basic plan or in the standard plan okay i cannot deploy a var file you know okay in the basic plan or a standard plan You know, if I want to deploy a var file, I have to you know choose uh, you know the enterprise plan. So it's running. So it will take again you know, one or two minutes to deploy this artifact. Okay. So this is completed now. No. Okay. Or uh, once I complete, I'll go back to the this application and just uh, okay restart. Sorry, uh, not restart. Refresh. Okay. You can see. one instance is running okay and i can go and you know uh, resend this okay. so then i'll be able to see 
whatever be the output which i am getting it locally you know i will be able to get it uh, you know okay online also so if i share this url to you you will be also will, will be able to access uh, you know this application because this is present online got it guys So guys, any questions up to to now? <laughs> okay. So you can see this. Uh, <coughs> There are a lot of options, you know, such as you can check out, uh, you know, how, there are how many app instances are available currently. So as of now, you know, uh, currently it is only one app instance. Okay, because initially when I create, you know, I have created uh, only one app instance. Okay, and that too is not registered, you know, with the Eureka server. <coughs> because i am having only one application okay i purposely did not uh, register into the eureka server okay so if you <coughs> come down you know there is option called as scale in scale out scale up scale down you know okay so you can make use of these you know okay so if you have a larger application you know where you know uh, <clears throat> you are giving a request you know in the thousands or you know in a lakhs you know per day you are getting a request to your application okay so you can define you know scale in or scale out rule okay so this auto scaling feature you know okay is provided by the micro microsoft azure you know okay which will be you know, which will be you know Uh, saving lot of your you know uh, headache okay so you would not have to worry about that you know uh, that auto scaling when to scale out when to scale in you know so you have to just go and define the rule okay so you can define the rule so you know scale based on the matrix okay so so if you are define the rule you can see this add a rule okay and you can specify that matrix okay so for example your cpu usage is is going beyond you know beyond the certain point you know so then you will have to you know okay then you want to uh, maybe increase the instance count okay so <clears throat> that you can you know decide and this is you know very cool feature of uh, microsoft azure you know spring app okay so so that you know help us to you know uh, run the spring boot application you know which require us scaling okay so which which require us scaling so that scaling in scaling out you know it is not your headache as a you know okay as a you know developer or as a operational you know uh, operation team member you know it is not your headache you know you have to just go and define you know uh, the rule okay and that uh, you know, will be will be creating you no know, automatically okay there is something called as you know the configuration so this is the you know option uh, you can see you know what are the configuration currently it is using what uh, java 8 or java 11 so all that uh, options you can you know, uh, configure you can change you can see okay over here okay so something called as a deployment okay 
and uh, you know uh, this is uh, this is a really cool feature of uh, you know azure spring app it is going to allow us to you know uh, provide a blue green deployment pattern also you know okay we can just go and achieve that uh, you know blue green uh, deployment pattern also okay so that is very you know a uh, good feature you know which is provided by you know okay azure app you know and i want to test that feature you know? okay Let, let's go and test this feature you know so for example so if you are making some changes you know okay so let's say i'm just made some changes okay so i just did this change into this application so if i ran it locally it will it will be able to execute you know okay you will be able to see the output if you run it locally so whatever be the changes you have made to this api endpoint you will be able to see those changes over here in locally you know if you if you do it locally you will be able to see this change but of course that is not available online okay why because that change did not yet update it huh? okay but i don't want to update you know um, immediately okay before before i test it you know okay um, online you know i don't want to take a chance okay so what we can do we can go and you know create something called as a you know a blue green deployment pattern okay so what you are having so this is the two identical setup you are having okay so one is called as you know blue environment and usually that blue environment will be your production environment and green environment you know usually that green environment will be a staging environment you know okay so let's say this is prod okay and this is your staging okay so i'm sitting on my local uh, you know uh, on premise machine local company machine you know okay and you know i'm just pushing the code from you know uh, the pushing the deployable artifact or deployable code you know to my you know uh, to my you know production so let's say initially i just uh, you know deploy it to my production okay after some time you know okay uh, after some time or after few days you know okay there is some you know um, feature which which we have introduced in our project you know okay and uh, we want to roll out those features you know? then of course we won't be roll out you know we won't be uh, rolling out those feature immediately to the production you know? okay so so what we can do so we can you know rolling those feature you know out to the staging environment first okay and you know there will be a certain you know uh, will be certain uh, users will be accessing you know there are a few members uh, from the client side or few member from the testing community you know will be accessing uh, your application and will be confirming whether that feature is working fine or not okay in a production like environment whether it is working fine or not you know okay so if it is working fine okay then then only you know i can go and decide to swipe okay so whatever be my you know uh, the staging environment you know then that will become a production environment that is whatever be my you know green that will become a blue okay 
and what whichever be my you know production that will become a stage okay and okay that is this is called as swiping okay so typically what we are going to do you know okay so if if we got the go ahead from the you no know, team you know okay then usually i'll just go and go and do what i'll just go and do swiping so this two environment you know will be swap to each other what i'll be doing okay so i'll be swiping the application which is present over here i'll be swiping over here and application which is present over here i'll be swiping it over here okay and of course you know so this application of course both the application will have you know their individual individual urls okay but this production application url will be accessible to the you know uh, the end user to the clients to the you know end customer so end customer will be accessing this application not this application okay because this url we will be exposing to only the tester or to you know up to certain extent you know uh, to the you know uh, the people from the uat uh, you know okay so i'll be exposing these url okay only to the certain Team members. Okay, so this kind of a feature, you know, okay, um, this is called as a blue green deployment, and which is also supported by you know, okay, Azure, you know, Spring App. Okay, this is a nice feature which is supported by the Azure Spring App. Any question, guys? Anything which you want to ask till now? Uh, I have a quick question. Does Azure uh, Spring Cloud? Do we need this uh, Java basics? I think very quick for this uh, to um, like learn. Uh, if you want to deploy that application, because you ultimately what you're doing, you you will be deploying that uh, Spring application or Spring Boot application to the you know okay cloud. So if you do have that uh, you know uh, little bit fundamental knowledge of you know okay Spring Boot application, okay mm -hmm. that will help. But of course that is not required. Okay, as you can see. We are not developing an application. We are only just deploying that application into the cloud. OK, so uh, like some kind of basics that would be fine to uh, yeah, handle yeah. our. Uh, thank you. Correct. You know? OK, so whatever you know, uh, you need not to be an expert, I would say. OK. Mm. OK, but for you know, whatever be the you know uh, surface knowledge if you are having you should be able to you know okay do your work no thank you okay so for example you know i just made this changes okay and if i want to create uh, again deployable so i'll be using the same command okay so what we are using this command this is the you know uh, name in command okay why we are, you know packaging once again because i just you know did the changes in my application okay so my changes you know uh, should be packaged once again into the jar file okay and that jar file you know okay i will be uploading you know okay but not to the production environment i will be uploading to the staging environment you know okay Make use of that command directly
Okay, so you can see this. So is the app deployment, you know? Okay, the earlier command uh, we use what is the spring app deploy is the command we use. You know, I want to create a deployment slot, you know, or something called as a staging as a deployment slot. I want to create. <clears throat> yeah. So I will be creating. Okay, deployment. Okay, and I'll be naming that deployment as a green. Okay. So what is the name of your application? Okay, which is present uh, on the Azure Spring app? Simple you know, microservice, that is the name. Okay, what is name of your resource group? Okay. So Spring Resources. What is the name of your service? Test Azure Spring. Or what is that? Test Azure Spring. Yeah. And what's the name of your jar file? Okay. And I'll be picking that jar file and I will be deploying that jar file. So if you look at currently, okay, here we are having only you know, default. Uh, Production deployment slot. No? Okay. And after successful execution of this command, you know, okay, there will be, you know, one more slot will be created called as green slot, which will be, you know, having your, you know, staging code, which will be, you know, your current latest code, which will be, you know, having. And once you, you know, test that properly, you know, once the people give, you are go ahead, you know, then you will go and decide to swipe the environment. So once we, you know, do swiping, okay, then whatever be your staging code, then it will become a production code. Okay, so you can see this is deployment is completed. Okay, and I can go and refresh this. Okay, and I can see there are two environment production and staging environment. Okay, and if you if you just look at you know the This green environment URL, you will be able to see. Okay, I'm just pasting the green environment URL, which I have uploaded just now. Okay, I'll be able to see, you know, that update, that updated. Okay, but if I just go and go back to that earlier, you know. This is my default. This is my production URL. So production URL, you know, still be able to see this. Okay. So once people are sure, pretty sure that you know your application is working fine, you know, then you know they can go and decide to swipe this application. And when you go and you know swipe this application, okay, if you come back to that deployment. Once again, okay. So under this application, I'm you know inside a deployment. So whatever this current staging code, I want to move this to a production. You know? 
so whichever be my staging code i want to make it as a production you know so this will you know do your swiping so do you want to continue so yes i want to continue so when you say this you know okay then whatever be the code which is present you know currently in the production that will become a staging and you know staging will become a production okay so we can go and you know just go and test this once again now if this is done you just refresh once okay and let me just go and so currently it is staging code you know is showing earlier my you know latest but if i just go and send it now this current staging you know uh, will become your you no know, old production so what was your old production you know okay just give us you know few second because this is not yet uh, fully up okay and take that you are at once again okay yeah. and i am inside the green environment which was earlier it was my staging environment but this time i have just made this as a okay you can see this now this time since you have made it as a you know okay uh, the production okay you will be able to see this okay and that option uh, you will be able to better understand okay, if this application has you know okay the end point assigned you know then you will be able to better okay make use of this okay so this is having a test end point you know okay let's assign the end point okay by using this end point you know okay outside user can can be able to access it okay so in few second you will you know okay see the end point you are in you know? okay so you can see this so what is your current you know okay uh, production code you know so this is your current production code you know you are having you can see this okay but if i am just making a changes okay i am just making a version 3 okay and i am you know making that you know as a staging okay so so your staging okay will come over here staging code will come over here so staging code will come over here okay and you will be able to see all those changes what you have done you know over here on this url okay but as soon as you go and you know swipe 
this, you know, you should be able to see those changes over here on this URL. So I hope, uh, you know, my point is clear to you. Okay, so Azure Spring app, you know, okay, has a very cool feature of blue green deployment. This is uh, this is not new. You know, it is one of the uh, you know uh, old deployment pattern, you know, uh, which you are having. You know, which uh, usually people use in the DevOps. Okay. Getting it. Okay, so I'll be showing you one more example, as I said. Okay, and in this example, you know, okay, uh, we will communicate, uh, you know, one service with another service. Okay, so for that, you know, let me just go and execute, you know, uh, this first. Eureka server. I'm executing it locally just to show you the output. Okay, you can run this on the local Eureka server. Just give me one minute, guys. Okay, once the Eureka server is uh, you know, running, I can just go and test this. URL, so you can see this. Uh, you know, your Eureka server, Spring Eureka server is you know, up and running. There is no currently, you know, any application registered on this. Okay, so currently there is no application registered. Okay, so when you execute uh, this application. OK. So your course service will be registered to the Eureka server. OK, so as soon as you run this application, you can see. You can refresh this. You no, know, you can see this. Your course service is registered over here. OK. And once you execute, you know, okay, another service. Okay, so your third application is also executing so i'm executed what the uh, three spring boot application one i have executed eureka server application course application and uh, the student application you know okay and we can see course application is you know registered if i refresh you know my student application is also registered you know so currently, there are two microservices which are registered, you know, in this, in the local Eureka server. You know, okay. And in order to register, what we have done, okay, we have not done any kind of a code change. Okay. Only thing 
you require to include you know okay few dependencies so this is the only dependency okay which needed for that uh, you know purpose to require eureka client okay and of course this application will be including eureka server you know your eureka application will be including eureka server you know so to that server you know okay this will be acting as a client so that application when when it execute you know it will be registered to that eureka server okay so this you know we'll have to configure if you are doing it on premise okay but if you are using a microsoft uh, azure spring app you know okay uh, this will be provided implicitly you know and of course if you just go and see your this application okay if you just go and see this rest controller okay and if you look at this url okay if you hit this url this will be running you know this locally okay so this will be getting the information from the student service okay and you know i'm calling another service okay so by using this you know line especially line number 47 if you can look at so this is you know calling the course microservice which is registered on the eureka you know so this is calling what course microservice which is registered on the eureka you know it's getting all the course information from this service okay it is storing all those course information over here and you are ultimately you know storing into a result you know which is the object of a student you know okay so we are setting up all those course okay into the student object you know by reading from the course microservice you know so ultimately if you just go and you know look at the output okay so you'll be able to see all those information okay so this information we are getting it from a student uh, microservice okay and all this course information we are getting it from a you know course microservice okay so i'm not used any kind of a database connectivity you know over here i have done you know that You know the code hard coded over here. You can see this. There are two student, student one zero one and student one zero two. Okay, and the course information. If you look at this service, okay. So course ID Java. You know it is taken by one zero one, and Python it is taken by one zero one. you know okay and uh, azure devops you know it is taken by 102 you know? so if you just go and give this information 101 if you are searching for a student 101 you know, you will be getting multiple course but of course if you just go and give 102 okay you will be getting only one course okay and of course this score and student name is also getting changed Okay. If you just go and hit one zero one, you will be getting, you know, the respective data. You know? So this service is not only getting the data from you know student, you know, but you know it is communicating further to the to the course service, you know, and that communication, you know, is done via a service discovery that is via a server. okay and now we will just go and deploy this you know to the uh, to the 
Microsoft Azure app. You know? So let's go and okay, just go and create the application. So since I am having only one application currently, I'll be creating you know another application. So first I'll be creating a course application. Okay. I need to provide spring app create, but I need to provide two information that uh, which cluster and which resource to, you know. So what is the service? I should go and provide that information over here. What's the service? Yes. It's Azure Spring. Test Azure Spring. That's my service. And what's the group? Spring resources okay so every time you know uh, you need not to type all those information if you set it uh, you know uh, in the configuration so that cluster name and the uh, resource group name every time you need not to provide but we since we did not set up in the you know uh, configuration we'll have to type this okay? so once this you know, command is executed successfully. We will be able to see over here. Okay, one more application course microservice. Yeah, there you go. Let's see. So this application is creating, and once that application is you know created, you know. Just let me just set up that next tag also. Okay, and my that's the name. And uh, for this application, I'll be assigning an you know, optionally uh, endpoint. Okay. So once this is created, okay, my course service is created. Then just go and create a student service. Okay, so it is creating that application. So once you see that application is completed, you know, you'll be able to see over here. Okay, so you can see this uh, your course application. You can see the status of the course application. Okay, it is running. But it is still not uh, you know, registered on the discovery server. 
okay because uh, we did not uh, you know uh, added the code itself okay so i want to register a code and you, you can see this you no know, registration is you know uh, registration status is you know uh, zero you can see this um, if i go inside course microservice and if i see the registration status you know it will be uh, unregistered okay if if you look at uh, app instance you know and discovery status you know it will show you like unregistered but once you deploy the code inside you know okay it will be registered to the eureka because once you deploy the code then only you will just go and okay put okay this code you know netflix eureka client and when this uh, you know dependency is present you know okay uh, when the jar file having that dependency is present you know then only it will register to the eureka server okay so let me just go inside now course microservice okay let me just go and say i'll just create a package uh, by the way somebody you know uh, i just sir uh, read just now uh, ask what is the difference between jar and var you know okay so in very high level you can understand jar stands for java archive okay and var stands for web archive okay so usually you know jar included you know uh, all the java classes okay and usually your var includes you know all the java classes along with uh, you know uh, the jsp file html file you know images all those resources so you can you can consider that is the difference high level you can see okay so thank once you. thank you yeah but you know having said that that is the you know difference but there are many 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 more points which are included you know there are many sub points which are included which i do not want to go into detail as of now okay this is a basic difference okay so once the deployable is ready you know we want to you know push that deployable to the uh, you know service to the application which we have created just now so which is the application we have created the course microservice is the name of the application okay so i would you know like to deploy that course microservice okay so i'll be deploying that course microservice you know so in same command is spring app deploy you know i will be deploying it to the production you know slot only uh the name of the application is course microservice the service name that is cluster name test azure spring resource group name spring resources and what you are pushing to this so we are pushing the deployable artifact you know so this is the jar file which we are pushing it to the you know okay application or pushing it to the cloud so once i push this application you know my deployment will be started okay and uh, along with this uh, you know So once this is completing you know, let me just complete this also okay
So this is uploading the application. And once it is uploaded over here, you know, so you will be able to see, you know, discovery status, you know. So rather than unregistered, it will be registered. Okay. You can come back. And here you will be able to see, you know, okay, registration status one, you know. So currently it is showing you zero, you know. So once this uploading is completed successfully, then you will be able to see one. Okay. Indicating what is that? What is you know one indicate you know over here? So it is indicate that instance, whatever instance we have created that is registered into the Eureka server. Okay, and currently only one instance we have created. Okay. So once this is you know uh, completed, you will be able to see that once that uploading is completed. Okay, so so once this is you know deployment is completed, you will be able to test your application. So here we are going to deploy what you know these two applications, student application and the course application. We are not going to deploy you know uh, that Eureka server. Okay, so my application is deployed now. Now let me just go and start deploying that another application because that will take a time otherwise. OK, I'm creating a package once again. That means, you know, OK, I'm just ultimately creating a jar file. And I'm deploying this. Okay, so this will take you know at least a couple of minutes. And you know, once this is in the process, let me refresh this. Over here, I should see you know one. So indicating you know this application. This course microservice got registered into the Eureka server. No? So this one indicate no, it got registered in, into the Eureka server. So if you just go and see the app instance uh, status. You know, so discovery status earlier it was showing you unregistered. You know, this time it was I'm going to show you up. You know, so this is this has been registered into the Eureka server. You can confirm that okay and once it is registered into the eureka server okay uh, you know it can it can accessible you know okay so any application can connect to eureka server and can can get the you know okay this instance okay which we are doing it over here you know so once my you know student application is deployed we'll be able to test this OK, so what we are doing, we are ultimately connecting, you know, by using this line, we are connecting to that course microservice. You know, we are getting the data from the course microservice. You know, we are setting it into the result 
you know of student and we are ultimately returning a combined result you know from the student as well as the course microservices okay so my student microservice has been also you know deployed you know, let me see the status it's again let me come back and so over here you know earlier it was showing you as zero you know it is showing you one and you know you can see come back over here and this url i can just point it from the postman or from the you um, browser you know which is anyways we are giving a get url request that is okay so if i send this um, there is nothing will be displayed 404 will be displayed because i need to set up the url and ultimately which url i'll be calling i'll be calling this url so i have to append this url okay and i should get the result okay so now i'm getting the result you know online okay so if i share this url to you also you should be also you know able to get this in the result you know so now currently i am accessing the application which is deployed you know on azure spring app okay you can go and you know okay can try to connect this application also getting it okay so we can we can see this you know, benefit of using you know uh, microsoft azure spring app right so this is the major benefit uh, the first one so we can migrate our existing spring boot application or spring app okay and if you want to take a benefit of a cloud scaling and cloud you know uh, you know economics of a scale you know okay then you know we can surely deploy the application to the azure spring app you know and for deploying you require very little change if you have you know already created a microservice kind of a application or spring boot application okay you require very little change you know okay so migrating is going to be you know very simple in that case you know if you are not uh, you know having too many uh, third party dependencies okay then it is going to be very easy for you to you know migrate okay so we can take a benefit of uh, you know complicated infrastructure rather than managing that complicated infrastructure you know okay allow the cloud provider in in this case you know the microsoft azure to manage that for you okay so that you can concentrate on writing the you know uh, business logic of the application okay so okay so with this you know okay i would like to conclude my session okay and i will say you know let us you know think of migrating you know our spring application which are running on premise you know okay on the spring azure cloud
so thank you guys thank you so much uh, so do you have any kind of a query there are very very few people yes think most of these people are left any any question do you have okay guys then uh, thank you chaitali uh, i've done from my side any any instruction from your side yes so thank you thank you so much for this uh, this webinar guys it's a request uh, if you all can see the feedback form link in the chat box do share the feedback on this webinar it will be great if you all will share your feedbacks so we'll get to know the improvements to made in the serving or the delivery of the webinar that's all guys thank you so much thanks to all for participating have a great weekend thank you all thanks everyone thanks everyone for actively listening to me and uh, you know thank you thank you so much appreciate it thank you thank you thank you varsha